So here we are again. You want to fap, don't you? I know it, I know it. Oh, it's so tough, right? Well, you know, go ahead. See what's going to happen. In fact, I think you know what's going to happen. You will almost immediately regret it. You will become disappointed with yourself, and you'll probably feel pretty shitty and drained. I want to ask you something. I want to ask you something very serious here. Where do you think you would be if you didn't spend so much time masturbating to porn? Seriously, where would you be? I want you to take a second and pause this video, okay? I want you to pause this video and think about it. Think about the life that you could be living. Imagine if you spent all of that energy you spend <laughs> running away from pain and discomfort through pornography, masturbation, and everything else that you do to escape. Uh, if you instead took that energy and put it into living an awesome life and building an awesome world. If the thought of your potential awesomeness stresses you out and makes you feel like you have to actually go jerk off because it's so stressful to think about that, don't! Stop being afraid of your own greatness. If you keep being afraid of it, you're going to keep running away from it and you're never going to get there. So leave this urge behind you. Get up, go out, and go kick some ass. Otherwise, you end up just like Spider-Man. Welcome to the Sacred Sexuality Project, where we help you live a higher expression of your sexuality. And today, I want to be talking about depression. Especially depression in regards to dealing with sexual issues, such as lack of sexual experience, sexual dysfunction, or, you know, just the, the feelings that, you know, you're not good enough because you're not getting enough action. So I've had a lot of really depressed people uh, write to me. And, you know, they're very down on themselves and at times even contemplating suicide. So these people usually tend to fall into one of two camps. The first camp is that they are X years old and they have never kissed a girl or had any kind of romantic experience before. And, you know, they feel that, you know, pornography is their only way to get sexual release and they feel just trapped and condemned for who they are. And the second group are people who are suffering from sexual dysfunction brought on by heavy porn use. So their penis isn't working correctly and they feel really bad about that because they feel like, you know, they can't have the sex that they need in order to feel good about themselves. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to not get so down on yourself, how to turn these feelings around. And, you know, this can apply specifically to those two scenarios that I outlined, but it can also apply to everything else. So if you're struggling with, uh, you know, feelings of depression or, you know, low self-worth or anything like that, then I encourage you to watch this video because I do think it'll be really helpful for you. So if you do find yourself to be in one of the situations that I outlined or are dealing with another kind of painful issue, I, I want to let you know that I'm sorry, it hurts. I know that life can get really rough and things can seem really bad and you know it's hard to see any way out of it. The thing I want to stress here though is that if you ever really do feel suicidal, get some help, okay? Go talk to someone. Call a suicide hotline, you know, get a therapist, talk to your friends, call your parents. Whatever it is you need to do to, you know, reach out and get help, do it. I don't want anyone dying because they're just too upset and don't see a way out because I know that no matter how bad things are, they can get better, okay? Secondly, I want to let you know that you're not alone. Whatever problem you have, someone else has it too, okay? Chances are a lot of people have it. So you don't need to be feeling like you're some kind of freak, okay? Especially when these matters relate to sexual and relationship kind of things. <sighs> Everyone at some point is going to get down about themselves about this, you know, and some people just it hits them harder. And I want you to know that it's okay. When it comes to these kinds of issues, in many cases, people are suffering for the exact same reasons. The individual circumstances surrounding each person might be a little different, but the underlying mechanics of the problem are the same. So let me break down why we end up feeling terrible about ourselves and our situation. Basically, what we have is this ideal in our head. It's this, these beliefs that we have that we could then compare to our life and we realize that our life does not match up to these ideals. It's a comparison between what you believe your reality should be versus what it actually is. So let's say, for example, that you believe that being normal is a good thing, okay? And in order for you to be defined as normal, you need to have sex by a certain age. When you hold these beliefs, and you have not had sex by that certain age, then you are forced to look at yourself, compare yourself to that ideal, and 
feel unsatisfied, to feel unfulfilled, to believe that you are less than what you should be. So here's another example. Say you believe that the more sex you have, the happier you'll be and the cooler of person you'll be and the, you know, all around better your life will be. So if you're not having a lot of sex, then that belief mandates that, you know, you're not going to be fulfilled. And this is how we end up getting trapped by these kinds of beliefs. We call them limiting beliefs because what they do is they, they trap us. They create requirements that dictate the terms of whether or not we can be happy. They become a prison. So how do you handle this? Well, you've got two options. So the first option is to meet the requirements of these beliefs, you know, to satisfy them, to actually live up to them. And then the second option is to change the belief. Now, there are good and there are bad beliefs. And depending upon which one it is, will determine which approach you will take to dealing with it. The good beliefs are the values, morals, and the ideals that have proven themselves that when you follow them, they, they lead to happiness, to true, lasting fulfillment. Okay, and these are the ones you want to keep. These are the ones that you want you do want to live up to because by living according to these core principles, you will in effect greatly enhance your satisfaction and happiness. On the other hand, there are these bad beliefs, these limiting beliefs, and these are the ones that put restrictions on your happiness, the ones that build walls that you need to jump over in order to be happy, but chances are you know you might not even be able to jump over them. So the first step is identifying which of your beliefs are the limiting ones that are keeping you from happiness. Maybe it's the belief that you need acknowledgement from women to be happy. You know, maybe it's the idea that you need to have lots of sex. Maybe it's the idea that you need to have orgasm. You know, I think this is a big one within this community that, you know, orgasm is this thing I can't live without. So how am I going to recover from this pornography addiction? Whatever the belief is, you need to identify what is making you view your life as inadequate and is putting happiness outside of your reach. Next, you want to replace this limiting belief with a positive one, okay? Beliefs are like plants. If you cut off the sunshine and the water to them, then, you know, they die. And what you want to do is you want to plant new seeds, you know, positive, empowering beliefs that will grow up and take that place. So, practically, how do you do this? Well, in coaching, we call this process reframing. And the way it works is that you identify the limiting belief in the situation, and then you work to invalidate it. You work to find evidence contrary to uh, that belief, to prove it wrong. And in turn, you then look for evidence to support your new empowering belief. So here's how you do it in the moment. Imagine that you are feeling crappy because you don't have a girl to hook up with or be romantic with, okay? You gotta first find that limiting belief, okay? That limiting belief in this situation is probably that you need a girl in order to be happy. So some of you might be thinking, well, I know that I don't need a girl, but I just really want one. Well, I mean, if you can't be happy without one, then somewhere there's a part of you that believes that you need it. So now you need to find a way to invalidate this belief. So, for example, think back to a time in your life when you didn't have a girl or a romantic interest or anything like that, and you were happy. You know, the fact that you were happy and you didn't have this relationship proves that it's possible. Or you could just think of all the people in the world who live voluntarily celibate lives and are extremely happy. Okay, like, it is a possible thing. And as soon as you accept that, it invalidates that old belief. Now you need to find the reasons that work for you. Every single person is going to be a little bit different and without me being there actually coaching you, I can't tell you how to do that through a video. You got to kind of play devil's advocate, play the lawyer, play the investigator and find the reasons why this belief is not valid. So once you crush this limiting and small belief, you want to focus on and strengthen this new empowering one. So an example empowering belief in this situation could be affirming that you believe that real fulfillment comes from personal growth and living a life of unconditional love and acceptance of the moment. Now you may find that you have to constantly refocus in on this belief because our mind gets really good at what it practices and if you practice a lot of negative thinking, a lot of limiting beliefs, then that's what your mind's going to be trained for and it's going to be constantly kind of trying to shift you back to them. So you need to strengthen yourself. You need to work against that resistance and build these new thought pathways in your brain that are going to be much more uh, positive and beneficial in your life. Now, if you really want to enforce these new beliefs, to lock them in and solidify them, you're going to have to start collecting 
evidence that supports them. However, the only way that you're going to truly see any evidence is if you are actually open to seeing it. So in many cases, this requires a willingness to be wrong. Because, you know, especially if this belief, this old limiting belief is something you've had for a while, you're going to have to be able to admit that you were wrong about that. Now this brings up something really interesting to me. And I need to preface this point by saying that I'm coming from the place of love and compassion and I'm sincerely trying to help you out and, and in no way condemn it. But what I believe is that in order for someone to be really down on themselves, they actually kind of need to have a big ego. Okay? Normally we associate a big ego with someone who's an overconfident asshole. But in my experiences, you know, being down and then also, you know, working with other people, there is a huge component of ego here. So, for example, some people are like, everyone can get a girl except for me. Or they think that everyone can be successful except for me. Or that other people can turn themselves around, but I can't. My response is, really? You're that special? You're that special that you're the only one who can't seem to turn themselves around? So what? You think that everyone else, they operate on the same set of rules, but you, you're special. You've got your own set of rules that don't apply to anyone else. You see, this is kind of what I mean by, in order for you to get really down on yourself, you got to think that you're pretty special, or at least being pretty special in that you're not special. So if you are a rational, mentally fully functional individual, then you will be able to recognize that other people have overcome very similar challenges to what you are facing. So don't go and tell me that you're so unique that you can't. I'm sorry, but you need to get over yourself. I'm here to tell you that you can, and that if you really want to, you have to believe me. Now, if what I'm saying right now is getting you upset, that's probably the biggest indication that what I'm saying kind of hits home for you, okay? So I recommend that you look at your beliefs. Are you attached to being down on yourself? Because this is something that happens. People get attached to being down on themselves because it's what they know. People want to stick with what they know because they're comfortable with it. And they don't want to let it go. And if you really want to find the support and evidence to reinforce your new empowering beliefs, then you're going to have to be willing to let all of this sadness go. People will be able to find support for whatever it is they believe. A positive person could see every curse as a blessing and a negative person could see every blessing as a curse. So at the very least, you're gonna to have to approach this process with an open mind because you're gonna to have to be learning, exploring, and finding new ways to do things because if you already knew how to, you wouldn't be having these issues. So you gotta be open, all right? So that's my show. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really wanna make your life awesome, so let me know how I can do that. I've got links in the bottom for all the things I want you to do, like the subscribing, upvoting, and whatever. But ultimately, more than anything else, what I want you to do is stay clean, okay? I want you to be the person you want to be. So just please do it!